Welcome into Drew Silly Diamonds for Monday, September 30th, 2024. We got a jam packed Monday for sports betters, guys. It is the MLB playoffs essentially starting today. We get a single tip ticket doubleheader in Atlanta. We're going to be breaking down both games with bets, and we got a doubleheader in NFL Monday Night Football. So let me know in the comments below what your picks are NFL, Major League Baseball, anything is welcome. Where you agree, where you disagree. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. All right, we're getting going early here, guys. 110 Eastern, 10, 10 a.m. Pacific. In the ATL, Cobb County, Georgia, it is Tyler McGill in the New York Mets up against Schwellenbach in the Atlanta Braves. Braves, minus 150 home favorites, seven in the hook being the total. This is game one, game two coming up after it. 88 and 72 for both of these two teams. The Arizona Diamondbacks also watching closely here. We'll get into the scenarios, but first want to go over the matchup handicap for game one, because we are betting the under of seven and a half plus 100 risk a hundred to win a hundred on the under of seven and a hook game. Number one, the reason being both of these two starters, McGill going for the Metropolitans, 29 year old out of Arizona, the former Wildcat, two earned runs his last 16 innings pitch, only seven hits given up. The Mets have won five straight McGill starts. Schwellenbach going for the Bravos, two earned runs his last 13 innings, just four earned his last 19 innings. And against the Mets, he has been absolutely money. 2 and 0 in his two starts this season, 14 innings just one earned run with a 15 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio it includes his last time out the one game that they played in in the series he went seven innings three hits one earned so i think both of these two starters have great starts the bullpen implications they're both going to want to win game one so then they can rest their their pitchers for game two get ready for the playoffs Overall, guys, I think runs are at a premium in game one. Add on the fact that both of these two bullpens, by my numbers, rank in the top 10 of MLB. Yeah, runs at a premium, guys. I think this ends two to one, three to one, something of that nature. We're going under seven and a half plus 100 game one, 110 Eastern. I believe it's 30 minutes after game one. It will be game two, guys. And going over the scenarios, because it plays into the handicap of game two, just want to go over them real quick. If either team sweeps, they are in and the Arizona Diamondbacks are in. Whereas if they split the series, the Arizona Diamondbacks are the third team left out for only the two spots. And both the Mets and the Braves enter. If the Braves... um. If they do split, the Braves will be in the five slot and the Mets will be in the sixth spot because the Braves will have won the season series. The MLB kind of did away with game number 163 if games if teams tie for the playoffs and they just go head to head. So that breaks down the scenarios here, guys. And the, the thing that we're going to bet in game two is the loser in game one because it's kind of a double edged sword here. And we put both of them in our back pocket meaning the team that loses game one has to win game two in order to make the playoffs or their season is over. And it sets up a situation like for the Braves, they have Chris Sale slated to go in game two, but they're likely going to scratch him if they win game one, because then they would save him for game one of the playoffs to try to get the edge there. And it's the same thing with the Mets. You know, you look at the Mets kind of pitching roster, in game two, if they lose game one, they're going to be going with their best pitcher in whatever situation kind of presents itself. It's an all hands on deck. Hey, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow type deal for the loser of game one in game two. So therefore, that's going to put us on in game two, the loser of game one. We're going in blind. Now, granted, I do want to throw out a side note because I don't have uh, the odds up yet for game number two. I'm doing this 11 o'clock p.m. Pacific on Sunday night for Monday. But um, if it's more than like minus 160-ish, say, don't like betting like huge favorites. I would pump the brakes a little bit. But either way, guys, we are on the loser of game one for game two in the single-digit doubleheader in Atlanta. This is going to be fun to watch during the workday. And then it uh, leads us into the NFL, Monday night football, guys. We'll break them both down now. We get the Tennessee Titans in the Miami Dolphins kicking off 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific in Miami Gardens. 37 being the total, minus two in the hook 
That is the Finns as the short home favorites. Tennessee comes in 0-3, both straight up and against the spread. The Dolphins, 1-2 straight up, 0-3 ATS. The Dolphins have actually been outscored 55-13 to the last two weeks. The story here, uh, the quarterback, Tua, he's out injured. Skylar Thompson, Tim Boyle have been taking the snaps. It has not gone well for him. And actually, the Dolphins traded for Tyler Huntley just over a week ago. And I'm glad I waited to do the video until late night because I just read the article, saw the uh, the quotes there. He's actually going to start. Tyler Huntley, the former backup for the Baltimore Ravens behind Lamar Jackson, is going to start here for the Dolphins Monday night football. He's the guy that started nine games with the Ravens. He actually made the Pro Bowl over 500 rush yards in his career, almost 2,000 pass yards as well. I think he's a quality quarterback. I really do, guys. He's kind of a next-level athlete. A, a side note here, personally, I remember when, when I was in college, I came back home and watched the high school I played. They're in the same district as uh, as where Lamar Jackson played. And he was an under-recruited guy, and I was at the game with a buddy. I'm like, who the heck is this quarterback running around? He was, like, moving at a different level. And then, sure enough, Kyle Whittingham at, there at Utah scooped him up, and now he finds himself as an NFL quarterback. So, uh, yeah, it's just funny how that stuff works out. Either way, guys, I think he actually has a lot of running plays. Um, I think they do a, a lot of work on the ground. He, he's a great athlete. Passing wise, it's going to be tough for him. I almost think he's in a tough situation because for him to understand all the playbook and as the quarterback, you really got to know everything. Um, I, I think it works out to actually Miami offensively maybe struggles a little bit and parlay that with the fact, not an actual parlay bet, but uh, work it in with the fact Will Levis, the quarterback for the Titans, he's been awful. Eight turnovers, two return for touchdowns. Um, I think they're going to struggle offensively as well. I know 37 is low, guys, but it's low for a reason. I think this is a field goal fest at best. Uh, we're going under 37 for Tennessee and Miami in the first Monday night football game. We got the Seahawks and the Lions, the late night kick here for the other Monday night football game. Reminder, if you could comment below, it helps out the algorithm, guys. Looking to grow the show, where you agree, where you disagree, what you think of the breakdowns, what your bets are, all is welcome. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As Ford Field here sees the Detroit Lions minus four-point home favorites, 40. Seven being the total. Seahawks at Lions, 815 Eastern kick. Seahawks come in 3-0 on the season. The Lions, 2-1. and Want to break down the schedule, though? The Lions' one loss was to Tampa Bay in a game they outgained them by over 200 yards. They really should have won that game. And the Seahawks come in. I think a fortunate three and zero. I thought the gold sheet had a had a nice write up on that. And the Swack making his first start in Bo Nix week two. They played the Patriots, and then week three they played the Dolphins without Tua. You know, strength of schedule in the NFL can kind of be almost misconstrued. It's it, I think people should concentrate on when you played some of these two teams. And working that in, the Seahawks had a pretty fortunate schedule here. They're also dealing with injuries on the defensive line, running back as well. And a trend here I think matters. 3-0 and teams in the NFL are 3-13 and against the spread as an away dog in game number four. Think about that. The Seahawks check all those boxes. They're the away dog. They're 3-0. and And the last 16 times this, this situation has happened, just 3-13 and against the spread, guys. So all of that. Plus the fact, maybe the most important here, who's the most profitable quarterback in the NFL over the last five years? Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes? No, no, no. It's Jared Goff. Man, this guy has just been underrated. We see it in the stats. So uh, he's a guy I like to bet on. Throws a great deep ball, doesn't turn the ball over much. We're going to bet on him. We're going to bet on the Detroit Lions. Minus four here, guys. Raucous atmosphere in Ford Field over the Seahawks. In recap, we got the Titans and the Dolphins under 37. We got game one, Mets and Braves under seven in the hook, plus 100 on that. And we got the game one loser in game two of the single ticket doubleheader in the ATL. Guys, that does it for Monday's show. Let's cash some tickets. Comment below, smash that like button. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. We'll be back on Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in.